I went home this past weekend because we lost a young dancer from Arizona in the most tragic way you could possibly lose a child. Suicide, teen suicide. This weekend was the worst. It was really hard on Sunday, like really hard. It's, I, I just can't think about this. It's so sad. I don't think our girls are aware that there are kids their age and younger who are suicidal, who have depression, and who just need somebody to talk to. I told Abby what had happened, and it's going to be an emotional week. But I really feel that we need to address it head on. Now, the group routine. This is a very mature subject. The name of the routine is Suicide Hotline. The news traveled rapidly throughout the dance community. A girl in Phoenix, Arizona, who Kalani and Kira knew personally, committed suicide. It's devastating to a family, to an entire town. I want to do a routine that is going to serve a purpose. It's about teaching a lesson and saving a life. So is it awareness? It's awareness, it's a, it's a story, it's how the hotline works, how the phones are answered, how, what takes place during a phone call. It's, it's about keeping someone on the line. It's more about the actual hotline than that. No disrespect. I think a dance of this magnitude, awareness is pivotal. It's something that I think will touch a lot of hearts and nerves for kids. Are you in a good place to really give it your full attention? I'm willing to take the risks. I take risks every day. I'm willing to take that risk. I believe in you guys. I want to bring in somebody coming from the teen suicide prevention hotline. Like a therapist or? Probably a counselor. From counselor, the that's the word. Which we need to figure out the dancing and the music and everything else. Well, let's get started. We know yeah, what we're doing. Let's well, get started. All right. I got to get my mind straight for this group. The name of the organization is called Teen Line. And you're telling this story, and there's no one to help you. You're not calling. And then finally, at the end, when the red phone rings, you, you're like, you made the call, and you're reaching for help. And it's like, and they go, and they lose you. And you, and they failed. Right. I looked up Teen Line, and it is teens helping teens. Yeah. I think the worst thing is when you feel alone and nobody understands. And I guess teenagers always think teenagers understand them, you know? Peers influence each other a great deal. Well, that's the thing. They're hearing about all this stuff. Whether we want to admit it or not, they're hearing about suicide. They're hearing about abuse. They're hearing about depression. And if we don't address it and give them a way to cope with it, we're in denial about the fact that it's out there, and they're living it, and they're experiencing it. It's better to give them an answer, at least a tool. This could be a powerful piece that impacts someone in a really positive. It could touch someone's life, and you don't even realize it. We're going to go one, switch, one. Then the people that are back go forward. And as she walks by, you pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. So you're on that edge of the, of the table, like that way. One, hold two. Three, hold four. Five, hold six. Go back, back, back. That. It is really, really heavy. It's like, oh. But in the same sense, I like the fact that she's actually able to tell the narrative. And she has a vision. That's rough. Let's do something to help. Let's do something to teach, because I think education is key. And if kids have someone they can call and ask for advice, then I think the kids will use it. I really do. I think kids will use this hotline to seek answers to their questions. If one kid, just one kid, picks up the telephone and dials that hotline number, maybe, just maybe, we are going to save a kid's life. Are you minus one mom still? She didn't call you guys? We're speculating. She could come back tomorrow, who knows? Or next week or whatever. I mean, you guys don't seem like it's a big deal. What would it do if we sat here and had a pity party into Boohoo? Nothing. 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 We have to invest our time and energy in our girls and making sure they stay focused on being a team and not getting sidetracked. Honestly, I think looking at the group dance and 
the message. I don't know, I think at one point you could put aside your personal differences related to the duet and do what's right for the sake of the group dance because it has so much potential to do such good. I just want to see you dance. Five, six, seven, eight. See, so stop. She needs to dance stronger. When JoJo was the other little blonde on the other end, it was like balanced on both sides. Now, you three are like in perfect unison and she looks off. This is an important stressful hectic week because we are putting a piece of art on that stage. This will be a routine that goes down in history with the last text. Have all the children gone? Where have all the children gone? Unfortunately, we all have to run around like chickens with our heads cut off and redo, revamp, reblock what we did day one. Because JoJo with the Bobo was a no-no show show. Arms up by your ears a little more on the walkover, just a little bit. When you're doing an important piece like the group routine, you need to focus. You need to bring your A game. And now, unfortunately, I just really don't have time for the minis. So, Chris, they're all yours. Go ahead. These are our guests. Hi. Cheryl. Cheryl Hi. Nice, to meet you. nice to meet you. Ginger. Ginger. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The girls know the group number, but do they really know what they're dancing about? I'm not so sure. So I invited Cheryl and Ginger here from the suicide prevention hotline called Teen Line. I want them to come and talk to the girls and the moms about what they actually do at Teen Line. I think it's good to learn about this for their own personal lives, as well as as dancers, putting something of this magnitude on the stage. Well, these are our girls okay. who are doing this amazing dance, and it's called Suicide Hotline, and you know, it's about someone in crisis. But we wanted to, you know, have something that they could connect to, like right. maybe something that inspires the kids. Because I think some of this stuff kind of goes over their head. Well, we said they've lived sheltered lives right. for the most part. You know, we've traveled around the world, but we still shelter our children from certain things because we don't know maybe how to address it properly. Hi. 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 I'm Ginger. So these these are the people we spoke to from um, the teen hotline. They're a crisis center. Well, I actually was a teen line listener myself a very long time ago, but now I'm a therapist and I work at Teen Line um, with Ginger. And so we do, I do a lot of education, prevention, decreasing stigma, talking to parents. Mostly the people who call in are between. I think yeah. 15, I think, is our most common age. But yeah, probably. Yeah. Right here. That's you guys. Well. That's your age. And we know suicide's the second leading cause of death uh, from 10 to 24-year-olds. Yeah. We're finding, I mean, if you're reading the news or anything, out, we're finding a lot of this stuff is starting younger and younger. So I struggled with depression a lot of my life. From a really, really young age, I started dealing with it. It got pretty bad when I was probably 11 or 12, when I was going to a really hard school academically with really awful girls. And um, I started having suicidal thoughts the next year. I didn't get out of bed for probably two weeks. I felt like I physically couldn't talk. But then I found a fantastic therapist, and I started training at Teen Line. I got medication, and I started talking to my friends and not feeling ashamed of it anymore. I hope that us doing this group dance can help spread awareness to all the teens out there that you can call this teen hotline if you're feeling unsafe and unprotected. I think it's a good dance to spread awareness about. How do you see signs? Some of the signs I would say is definitely a personality change of someone who's acting differently than the way they used to. And it's hard with teens because teens act differently every day. What's the best advice that you would give to someone like that? I had a caller once who was an 18-year-old boy and I picked up the phone and he was crying and crying and crying and I said, what's wrong, what's going on? And he just said, I've never felt so much pain in my whole life and you picking up the phone means more to me than anything else I've ever done. He didn't need anything from me. He, he felt pain and he wanted someone to know that he felt pain because he couldn't tell anyone else. He was the jock. And so the fact that I picked up the phone, he said saved his life. And I think that is the impact of the hotline. After hearing such an incredible story, 
from these ladies, it is evident that we really need to put our best foot forward. This subject matter is incredibly sensitive, and this dance can wield a lot of power. We've got to make sure that this dance is done with dignity and grace, because one wrong step, and this could be the dance that steps over the line. There is no room for error here. This is a very touching, emotional subject. And by you guys putting this out there, let's say you help one kid. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Let's say you help 10. You never know who you, never life know. you might touch. This little girl came up to us a few weeks ago in Arizona. And oh, yeah, I remember that. Me. I was. Yeah. Actually, yeah, she yeah. did. And she was like, You guys saved me after I watched, and you guys saved me put myself in dance class and you guys saved me. And I was like, oh. You inspire people in ways that you don't realize and that's why it's so important the words that you use, the way that you live your life. You never know what actions, what words are gonna touch someone. These girls never fail to amaze me. They are such powerful role models to kids all over the world. And it makes me so proud that through their dance, or even wearing an awareness ribbon, helps spread the message to kids all over the world. This group dance is a very touchy, scary subject. I have never seen a group dance about Teen Hotline, so I hope we can pull this off. It can't just be one of those group dances. It has to be one of those amazing group dances that you always remember. Ladies and gentlemen, in Teen Advance competition, please help me welcome entry number 77, Suicide Hotline. Suicide Hotline is definitely one for the record books. I think the choreography is fresh, it's different, it pushes the girls. And this dance is at a level that's competitive for teens, and I love it. You want it to leave an impression with the judges, with the audience, you want everyone to feel it. So hopefully they did. All right, in our teen advanced groups, in third place we have
Entry number 51, Boogie Woogie. In second place, entry number 36, Juke Joint Blue. I know our group dance looks small with only four girls, but the dance was powerful and it looked really strong. And they danced with a ton of emotion. And first place in our teen advanced group goes to entry number 77, Hotline. Congratulations, girls, and let everyone know which dance company you're with. Congratulations. Thanks, you guys. Those kids went out there, and they did everything they needed to do. I thought the group performance was perfect. It was. Overall, I could not have asked for a better day. It was fabulous. Because one of my all-time favorite routines, Suicide Hotline, won. Well, our group dance was amazing to watch. So was it up there with your other iconic dances that you yes. love so much? Yes. Definitely? Yes. It was really good. My favorite dance I've seen since I've been here. We so all had The choreography was, like, shoulders. amazing. Like, I loved it. Jess, you picked a really bad week to bail, because this is going to go down its history as one of the ALDC's best dances, and you're not going to be a part of it. Today was what we've been asking for. Set the bar higher, and they will rise to the occasion. Don't water it down. We want harder. We want, and they, well, and they all did it. Well, I set the bar high for JoJo, and she walked out. That kid didn't rise to the occasion. That kid said, see ya. She's at the pool today. <laughs> I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> oh, she is at the pool? You know what? God works in mysterious ways. Things happen for a reason. Yeah, but that's that's the choice that her mother chose to make her look that way, is to, when the going gets rough, you just take off. She could not have done this dance. It would not have been the same thing. Girls, quitters never win. They might make money, but in the long range plan, who is the person who's not improving, who's not learning? The person who's sitting at the pool. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So when you don't show up, you don't learn, you don't grow, you don't experience, and uh, you keep doing what you're doing. Well, this was a lesson for everybody here. You better think long and hard before you walk out that door. I don't know what the future holds for the ALDC. I just know it doesn't involve JoJo. No more Bobo.